Hi everyone and welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Introduction to the Identity Access Management Training video. In this video we're going to discuss how traditional access management systems operate and their issues, an overview to IAM concepts and its benefits, and WSO2 Identity Server features and its benefits. Identity Access Management or IAM is identified as a secure discipline that manages user identities and privileges securely, enables the right individuals to access the right resources at the right time for the right reasons, provides a better user experience to the end users, meets increasingly rigorous compliance requirements, and increases productivity while reducing IT costs. This security practice is a crucial undertaking for any growing enterprise. Before diving into IAM, let's look at how a traditional organization infrastructure manages identities and access privileges. In the traditional access management approach, identities and privileges are managed within the application premises, compelling users to create user accounts for each application that they want to access. For example, if John Doe needs to access three different applications, he should create three separate accounts for each application and maintain the corresponding credentials separately. Clearly, this traditional application access management approach is not capable of achieving modern business requirements and security challenges. With this approach, there is a higher chance of data breaches. Let's rewind to the previous scenario where John had to create a password for each application. For this, either he will use the same password for all the applications or use separate but simple passwords so that he can remember them easily. There's no guarantee that all the application developers manage passwords in a secure manner in both these approaches. This approach also has minimum user experience. When you want to log into applications, you have to remember each login credential and each login experience differs from each other. If you are a new employee, you have to wait till the admin team creates user accounts for each application. For a small organization with just a few applications, this may be bearable. But if you have hundreds of applications, imagine the waiting time before you can log into these applications. The next prominent concern is governance. When you have to introduce a new application to the organization, you need to implement user management capabilities for that application from scratch. All the users have to be created all over again within the new application, which makes it less agile. These issues result in low productivity and high IT costs. Moreover, it is not easy for traditional access management systems to comply with regulations. Therefore, we need a productive mechanism to handle these issues. IT and access management disciplines are increasingly business aligned and help to overcome these challenges. Next, let's learn basic IAM concepts and how they help to overcome the challenges we discussed so far. Centralized access management and access control is an aspect of the IAM system where users are centrally managed in a component called the identity provider. All the applications trust this identity provider and users log in via identity provider. This eliminates the need to maintain multiple passwords and identity mismanagement issues in the application layer. With this, if you want to introduce a new application, there is no need to create user accounts in that application and the application developer does not need to worry about user management. They can simply integrate with the central identity provider. The process of creating and managing user accounts or identity information within the system is identified as user provisioning. When a centralized user management system is in place, there is no need to manually create accounts in all the applications. Instead, you can create users in the identity provider. However, other systems may require user information to exist within the application for internal processing. This can be achieved by automatically sending a user creation request to the required applications without having to send over sensitive information such as password credentials. This also means that if we need to delete a user account from the system, it can be done by simply deleting the user from the identity provider. User onboarding or uploading a new user to this whole network of applications is not a hard task for system admins anymore, and it can be done effectively within a short period of time. 
with single sign-on or SSO, the users need not enter the login credentials every time they log into each application. In this approach, when a user tries to log into an application, the application redirects the user to the identity provider. The user then provides the login credentials to the identity provider and gets authenticated. After a successful authentication, the identity provider sends the authenticated user information back to each application. When the same user tries to access the next application, the identity provider lets the user seamlessly access that application without prompting the user for credentials again. There are standards such as SAML, OpenID Connect, or OIDC, WS Federation that define these requests and responses in advance. In the past, the username and password were more than enough to authenticate a user. With the advancement of technology, password-based authentication no longer securely protects your user accounts. There are numerous attacks that can easily break the password-based authentication. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, emerged as an answer to this problem. It creates a layered defense and makes it more difficult for an unauthorized person to access a target system. Authentication factors in MFA rely on two or more independent credentials of the three categories. Knowledge factors, something that a user knows, such as a password. Possession factors, something that a user has, such as a mobile phone. Inherence factors, something that a user is, such as a fingerprint. With a combination of two or more of these factors, the user is authenticated. In this example, the user is first authenticated with the username and password, which can be considered as the knowledge factor. This is followed by the SMS-based authentication, which is the possession factor. Finally, the user is authenticated with the fingerprint, which is an inherent factor. Even though multi-factor authentication provides additional and better security, it's not perfect. There are some practical problems. Users don't like to use MFA all the time. For example, most of the Google users still stick to just their username and password. Ensuring maximum security while providing reasonable usability is a continuous trade-off. Similar to the password-based authentication, MFA authentication mechanisms are also susceptible to attacks. But with adaptive authentication, authentication steps can be configured and deployed in a way that the system would decide which steps to prompt during the authentication process depending on the user's risk profile and behavior. This enables an organization to precisely apply the right level of gateway security to each and every login request instead of issuing static procedures for everyone to follow under all circumstances. Identity Federation enables access to multiple systems across different organizations. In the current world, businesses will continue to grow with acquisitions and mergers. With this, you will have to grant permission to users from other organizations to access your applications. It's not practical to create all the users for each application. Instead, we can create a trust relationship between the identity providers. When a user from one organization wants to access an application in another organization, the request will first come to the identity provider of the own organization and then be forwarded to the identity provider of the other organization. The user can then access the application as the identity providers now trust each other. This is called identity federation. In modern society, most users have accounts in well-known identity providers such as Facebook and Google. Hence, we need to let users bring their own identities and access a system which is more important in a consumer-driven world. In social login, identity federation is accomplished using well-known identity providers. Today, privacy is a key differentiator in any business. As the IAM system is responsible for users and their identity management, it also works as a regulatory compliance enabler in your system. If you are an EU citizen, you would have already heard of GDPR. CCPA is another privacy standard that comes from California, USA. Now that you have learned the main concepts of in any IAM solution, let us learn about WSO2 Identity Server. 
WC2 Identity Server is a 100% open source IAM solution, which is under the business friendly Apache 2.0 license. Its inherent extensibility helps organizations build a tailor made IAM platform. Globally, we manage more than 100 million user accounts in our 180 plus production customers in many industrial verticals, including banking, finance, healthcare, education, and government. Further, 500 plus education institutes are using our products in their solutions, while open source usage is far more than this. We provide 24-7 production and development support while operating globally, having many offices in USA, UK, Germany, Brazil, Australia, and Sri Lanka. In 2019, WSO2 ID Server was named as an overall leader, keeping a co-leadership compass on identity APIs. In 2018, WSO2 Identity Server was named as a product leader in Leadership Compass, Access Management and Federation, and an innovation leader in the Leadership Compass for CIM in Coopinga Call Analyst Reports. We're also the API security provider in WSO2 API Manager, which is a leader in the Forrester Wave API management solutions. Further, in Gardner PI Insights, Identity Server is rated 4.3 out of 5. The key features of WSO2 Identity Server are single sign-on or SSO and Identity Federation, Identity Bridging, Adaptive and Strong Authentication and Multifactor, Accounts Management and Identity Provisioning, Fine-Grain Access Control, API Microservices Security, Identity Analytics and Privacy. There are several unique benefits that WSO2 Identity Server can offer. As it is built with open standards and under open source licenses, it avoids vendor lock-in. WSO2 ID Server's extensible architecture allows customization to build unique IAM use cases. It also provides ownership of the extensions that you use. Further, it's a proven IAM solution for large-scale deployments with millions of users. It provides effortless integration with cloud and on-premises applications, third-party authentication systems, and social identity providers. The connectors in the WSO2 Server Connector Store facilitates integration with external systems. It also enables hassle-free deployment and low-cost maintenance that frees you from high IT costs. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got to know about traditional access management and its issues. Then we got an overview of IAM concepts and benefits. And finally, we got introduced to WSO2 ID servers features and benefits. If you have any questions or need further clarification, please feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. You can email on im-dev at wso2.org. In Stack Overflow, you can tag your queries with wso2 or wso2is, and our Slack channel is wso2is.slack.com. Thanks a lot for watching this video. We hope to meet you in another exciting training video.